Welcome to the Night Club, guys. It's your host, the Night Wrencher. This is actually video three on custom building your own Holly carburetor. This is the most important part of this entire video because you need to know exactly what these things are supposed to be used for and which ones you should use for your particular build. And it's also going to outline why I'm going to be using specific ones now. And I'm going to go ahead and switch them out later on when we start adding boost. So this has been a really long series. I hope you guys have been enjoying it. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, so the question is, why do I have so many medium blocks here on the table? And there's a really big reason for that. And I actually have them divided into two different types of metering blocks. Believe it or not, there are different types of metering blocks. The ones on the left are primary metering blocks. The ones on the right are secondary metering blocks. The primary metering blocks are pretty much almost all the same. There's a couple differences. The most important difference to know is that some of these metering blocks have a screw in, ported vacuum passage, and then some of them are just like a press fit. And then there's two different sizes. There's a larger size right here. And then there's a smaller modern size as you have right here. And then pretty much the last difference is whether or not it came factory with a little whistle tube. And this one did. There's one oddball one here, and this is the one for Barry Grant. They came factory billet aluminum and aside from that they're no different from these ones right here except for the fact that these come with three emulsion holes and these only come with two but that's not necessarily too important unless you start going into like a lot of fuel flow then you might need three of them but in reality when I'm running the aftermarket metering blocks uh, that have the five holes I actually have the middle the top and the bottom blocked off and the second and the fourth one drilled out uh, just like a standard Holly one anyway so it's not like we're going Going into anything kind of crazy with going with the third hole and in fact with three holes I noticed that they actually made them smaller than the standard Holly one so these are like 23 thousandths maybe in 20 thousandths per hole and these ones over here are like 28 thousandths or 25 thousandths ish depending on the model but we're going to be excluding the Barry Grant one here because we don't actually need it so the rest that we have here like I mentioned before these are the primary ones but the real magic is actually in the secondary metering block so there's a couple different variations of these some that came with four corners idle some with that came with uh, double pumper versus set vacuum secondary and then the last one is whether or not they came with a power valve so there's three very big distinct differences the one thing that they all share is that none of them have a passage for the vacuum port like I mentioned on the primary the primary one almost always has a passage the only exception to the rule would be this Barry Grant one but like I said we're not actually talking about this and then aftermarket medium blocks don't have the passage either because usually race style carburetors they will run a lock distributor or an aftermarket ignition box that will basically negate the effects of a vacuum advanced solenoid that's on a distributor or diaphragm whatever the stock holly ones since they do tend to go on a stock engine with a vacuum diaphragm uh, they will tend to have a vacuum port on the the time port or ported vacuum side of the medium block but the secondary circuit never has one i haven't seen one that'll have it and the reason it probably doesn't have it is because they're mirrored right they're mirrored mirroring metering blocks when you flip this one on the opposite side the vacuum port would actually face a throttle linkage versus all of the other ones that'll face the passenger one so you guys can see this passage right here this is the one for the ported vacuum so if you wanted to add a ported vacuum you could drill here and then drill here and then add a plug if if you really wanted it but if you don't want it then you know it, it's already off so for the secondary we're going to be running a secondary medium block primary we're going to be running a primary medium block you can run a primary medium block in the secondary side if you want to and a lot of people do that when they go into four corner idle adjustment they will order a second primary medium block and will put that on the side on the back side and then they'll start doing the um, four corner adjustment but then they'll have to tune all the other circuits to match your existing carburetor since the front side and the secondary side will have slightly different settings depending on how you have the rest of your car set up so there's a lot of complications that we're going to go into in future videos so before i start losing more of you guys the key differences between the different secondary blocks like i said the primary blocks are almost all the same the secondary blocks there's a couple different differences so like i mentioned before whether it has a power valve hole or it does not so this one does not it's not drilled for it you cannot add it 
Uh, I'm sure you could try to add it, but you probably mess up the block. Don't do it. The second thing is obviously the time vacuum port, which they don't have. And some of them came without four corner idle adjustability. So this one actually did come with four corner idle. And the easy way to tell is that it has this hole and this hole for four corner idle already set up. And then this hole right here is tapped and ready to go for four corner idle. This one right here, does not have it. So it kind of looks like it does have it, but if you actually take this pin and you try to stick the hole in here, it actually doesn't go all the way through. And if you check in here, the hole doesn't actually go all the way through. So you can actually, if you have the right tap, you can tap the threads into this uh, metering block and then drill this hole and you can have it have the secondary um, idle adjustment, but I already have one, so I don't need to do that myself. The next difference would have to be whether or not it's made for a double pumper style of carburetor. So all of them will have this hole right here, but not all of them will have a hole right here. So like just the same situation with this hole, this hole is not fully drilled out. You can see that it was cast in, but it was not drilled out. The passage that feeds the center squirter right here is actually drilled in here because it has the plug right here. So, you know, Holly took the time to drill this, but they did not take the time to drill that. So the if you're using this on a double pumper style carburetor, you would just have to take the right bit and drill this through just straight in. And then it will essentially become a double pumper compatible metering block. Moving on, we have the ones that were drilled for secondary power valve. So this one that I have right here does have the hole for the power valve. It does not have the timed port vacuum. It doesn't have the hole for it. It is cast in here because they're essentially the same style of metering block, uh, but it does not have the hole drilled for the ported vacuum. This does not have the hole drilled out for the four corner idle adjustment, but this one was drilled to be on a double pumper carburetor, but somebody seemed to have plugged this hole and they actually stripped the screw in here and they broke the head off in order to prevent it from being ran as a double pumper. I don't know why they would do that. The only reason I can imagine they would plug this is if they converted their carburetor main body to a vacuum secondary and they actually didn't want the secondary pump on the fuel bowl to start sucking in fuel at idle. It doesn't really make sense as to why somebody would plug it because even if you were to convert the main body to vacuum secondary, there's no way for fuel to be pulled from this passage unless they were having like an issue where like fuel was bypassing and it was running rich or something. But this is a messed up one. I don't think I'm gonna be able to fix this. I might, it just kind of depends. And this last one is actually exactly the same as this one, not drilled for a vacuum port, was drilled for a secondary power valve, was not drilled for four corner idle, and it was drilled for it being a double pumper from the factory. So I think to start off with, especially since I'm gonna be running it exactly how I have it before, I'm instead of using a block off, I'm just not going to run a power valve in the back. I am going to run a four corner idle. So this is the metering block I'm going to go with in the back because this one is drilled for four corner idle and it does not have a rear metering block. If I go under boost and I decide that I actually need a boost reference power valve on the back side, I'm going to go ahead and switch the metering block out. But until I get to that point, I'm going to be using this one right here. Some people say, why can't you just take a primary metering block and put it in the back? And in fact, you can actually do that and if it comes to the point where I do need uh, four corner idle adjustability and I need a power valve I could just take a primary one stick it on the back take this one that has like the screw on vacuum fitting and actually put a plug here take another one that has a, vac a screw on vacuum fitting plug that one and I will essentially cut off the ported vacuum which I don't need and then I'll have the front and the rear metering blocks independent of each other. So I'll have four corner idle adjustability. I'll have everything else that I need as well. The last thing you're gonna to wanna to check before you actually decide what parts to use on your carburetor is that you're gonna to wanna to baseline these metering blocks to see which one best suits your engine application. So right here, I have several different metering blocks and of which these metering blocks have different sized orifices based on the engine that they were designed for. So a lot of people think that you can just buy a carburetor off the shelf and install it on your engine, adjust the idle mixture screws and then let it go. And that's completely far from the truth. Usually there's a reason why there's four or five different 600 TFM Hollies. And that's because every carburetor has very specific items that are different from the other models of the carburetors, not just in jetting, but in the metering blocks themselves. A big thing is actually 
something you wouldn't really notice, but you can clearly see between these two medium blocks right here, and that would be the passage for the power valve restrictor channels. I have videos for the individual circuits of the carburetor so you can better understand what I'm talking about. But as a general rule of thumb, you should really baseline your parts before you actually get them installed on your carburetor. Because even if you're making something like, let's say you're building a house, you wanna survey the land and see where the elevations are before you start pouring foundations in case you need to make adjustments. Same exact thing applies to building a carburetor. You're gonna to wanna to check all of these orifices in size and see if that's something that's compatible with what you have on your current carburetor. Like I mentioned, the power valve restrictor channels on this one, they're absolutely massive, and on this one, they're fairly tiny. And the easiest way to baseline a carburetor is with something called a pin gauge set. So this is something you can buy online, you can get it at eBay, Amazon, I'll have a link in the description below to, if you guys wanna get one. What this basically does, it has a bunch of little pin gauges, and they're preset to specific sizes. So for example, I'm gonna grab one that's an 030, essentially 30 thousandths, and it is calibrated and it's designed to meet a specific hole. So if we go ahead and meet right here, this one is considerably bigger than the pin gauge that I have. I'm gonna go up 10 sizes and then that's 040. And it does get a little bit tighter, but it's still way too big. I'm gonna go 050, I go ahead and check that, and it's still too big. And then you're gonna go up probably to the biggest one that this set has. And even the 060 is too big for what we have right here. And in fact, this is probably like an 062, maybe an 065, which tells me that somebody probably drilled out these power valve restrictor channels in order to have it fit their application. Maybe they were running a particular fuel where they just needed a bunch of fuel down the power valve restrictor channels. And then we go ahead and take the other one I was holding earlier. Let's go ahead and start with that same 030. And in fact, it does fit a little bit tighter. Let's go 040 and go ahead and check that. 040 fits nice and snug. So it can either be 040 or 039. So go ahead and drop down a size. And 039 fits pretty good. So this is probably an 039, and you're gonna to wanna to do that to all the orifices that you have here. You're gonna to wanna to do that to the idle feeder restrictors, the power valve restrictor channels, the emulsion holes. And once you have all that squared away, when you go to make changes, when you identify problems in your tune, you're gonna know exactly where you're at and where you want to be. If all of a sudden you're doing your tuning and you notice that one of the numbers is completely way off of what it's supposed to be, you're gonna realize that you have maybe another issue that's going on because if you know that your idle feed restrictor normally runs really good at 032 and for whatever reason it's asking for a ton of fuel, maybe it wants an 040 and 045 and other builds run 032, maybe there's maybe a fuel pressure issue, maybe you have a clog, maybe you know a variety of different problems can arise when you don't check where you're at. So you always wanna baseline your carburetor before you start doing your build. So this was pretty much the most important part of this whole build series because you have to know what parts you are going to be needing when you're assembling your own carburetor. I'm gonna go ahead and get started on building this thing, putting all the pieces together, cleaning everything up, and getting it ready to swap out so I can start running E85 in my truck. So that's about it. I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher out.